Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Carlos Malley. I am the discipleship pastor of the Circle Church of Alexandria, located in Alexandria, Louisiana, here for another weekly word. I'm also the character coach of the LSUA men's basketball program, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to tune in at some point this week to the weekly word as well. So shout out to Coach Cordera, his staff, as well as the men's basketball team. I'm extremely proud of you. Me and my family really enjoy coming to the games and just spending time with you. And, and I'm grateful to God that I get to pour into your lives this season. And so I pray that this word lands on good ground in your life. I'm thinking of you this morning because I was studying and reading on Coach Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr was a very successful uh, he is a very successful coach, but he was also a successful player. But what many people may not know is that Steve Kerr was um, not really a household name out of high school. In fact, the only scholarship offer he had came late in the, in the season of his senior year, and that was to the University of Arizona, in which he uh, took that opportunity, he made the most of it and it eventually landed him in the NBA. Steve Kerr won five NBA championships as a player and he has won three NBA championships as a coach. But one season that particularly stands out to me is in 1997, uh, Steve Kerr uh, hit the game winning shot for the Bulls to win uh, a championship in 1997. Now, what's interesting about him hitting that game winning shot and I want to say it was game six, is in the previous five games before game six, Steve Kerr had only averaged uh, 3.4 points a game throughout that entire series. And he had 17 points total in those five previous games. But he was ready at the moment he was called upon. And everybody knew that Michael Jordan was going to take that shot. Instead, Jordan passes the ball to Steve Kerr, and Steve Kerr knocks down that jump shot and wins uh, wins the NBA championship in 1997 for the Bulls. And so I, I just find that very interesting because I know when I'm talking to the players this week that oftentimes, you know, we're all, as a former player, we're all wanting sig a significant amount of playing time. And all 12 players, all 15 players, however many you have on your roster, everybody feels like they should be at the game at that moment to contribute. But I wanted to share a quote with you as I reflect back on, on that situation with Steve Kerr, is that Steve Kerr was not someone who got a lot of minutes. I mean, he played, he was in the rotation, but he was someone who had to train himself to practice and prepare that when he got his opportunity to play, he was gonna make the most of it. Whether that was 20 minutes or two minutes, he was gonna be ready. But in order for you to be ready, man, in order for us to be ready as a church, as, as believers in Christ, we always have to be ready for whatever that moment brings. And so Coach John Wooden said this quote, and it's, he said, uh, in terms of competitive greatness, be at your best when your best is needed. Be at your best when your best is needed. And so I wanted to share this text as I think about competitive greatness. And I want to take us to the Psalms, uh, chapter 71. And I'm going to start around verse 20. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. And it reads, you caused me to experience many troubles and misfortunes, but you will revive me again. You will bring me up again. Even from the depths of the earth, you will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Therefore, I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you because you have redeemed me. Now, David is writing this song as a much older, much wiser man. And the, the takeaway from this message is that in life, as a body of believers, as a basketball team, as followers of Christ, we're gonna face many challenges. But remember this, 
as I'm talking to the church, as I'm talking to my team, as I'm talking to the staff, as I'm talking to our leaders, that every obstacle and challenge that we go through is designed to do three things for us. It's designed to strengthen our faith with God and strengthen us. It's designed to correct us in the process of growing in our character development, or what we would call in the church discipleship. And it's and it's designed lastly to develop us and who, who God has called us to be. So I gave you the example earlier of, of Steve Kirk and how how he hit the game winning shot. But as I also said, Steve Kerr was a person who didn't know how many minutes he was going to get. Probably averaged somewhere between maybe eight to 12 minutes a game in a four quarter, 12 minute per quarter basketball game. But he practiced hard, he continued to work, he continued to train as if, if he only took two shots that game, he wanted to knock down both of those shots. He wanted to be ready he wanted to be competitive and be great in that moment when he was needed. So I speak to my players this morning and I say to you, whether you get five minutes or whether you get 15 minutes, my encouragement to you is be ready and be your best when you're needed. When you're on the sideline, make sure that you're cheering your team on. Make sure that you're encouraging them because you want them to encourage you when you're in the game. For our coaches, your coaches have been given to you to strengthen you. Why do you lift weights? Why do you run? Why do you do these things? For us as a church, why do we study? Why do we participate in small group? Why do we, uh, week in and week out, we attend meetings and we attend service and, and we work and we do community together. It's designed to strengthen our faith. It's designed players to strengthen the temple that God has given you. Correction. Your coaches have been given to you for correction. Your professors have been given to you for correction. Your parents and your community have been given to you for accountability. For us as a ministry, our pastors and our leaders have been given to us for correction, to point us back to the Word of God in order to develop and grow us in discipleship. And you want that. You want that because you want accountability. You want community. And you want to grow as a leader. And lastly, developed. You know, we as, you know, believers in Christ, we want to develop and be all who God has called us to be. Just like my players, you want to be all that God has called you to be. But in order to do that, you not only have to work on your mind and your body, you have to work on your spirit. You have to work on your character. You have to work on the intangible things that you may not think are very important today. And the same for us as a local body of believers. You may not think uh, reading, and you may not think attending study, and you may not think daily prayer, you may not think fasting is important, but all of these things are designed, whether you're a basketball team or a local body of believers, to strengthen, to correct, and to develop us. And in the end, when we look back at the words of David in this song, he rejoices and he thanks God for it. If you have the ability to do what you love today in our body of believers on that team, rejoice and thank God. Thank him for the strength. Thank him for the correction. Thank him that he thinks enough of you that he even wants to develop you. You know, this morning, as I prepare for this week, I wanted to spend some time in the word of God in order to share that word with you. You know, one thing I, I left out in the story with Steve Kerr is as much success as he has attained and achieved as a coach. When you go back and you watch the uh, Michael Jordan, the last the last dance documentary is something I didn't know. And that was his father, who was a university president in the Middle East, was assassinated. He lost his life. And so 
in the midst of Steve Kerr's tremendous success, he suffered a tremendous loss when his father, when his father's life was taken. Many of you in the church and on our team are going through a lot of challenges right now. I'm going through challenges right now. But stay the course and stay with the Savior. That was something that I spoke about on the call this morning. Is stick with the Savior through whatever suffering that you're going through. So I pray that as you continue your competitive greatness, our greatness as a body of believers, our greatness as student athletes, that you will remember to stick with the Savior, that you will remember to be at your best when your best is needed. And may God continue to strengthen, correct, and develop you all. I pray that that word lands on good ground in your life this week as you go out and you serve God and you serve your community. Man, I'll see you later on this week prayerfully. And y'all take care. To my Circle Church family, I love you. Thanks for tuning in. And anybody who tuned in today to this video, I pray that it landed on good ground in your life. I always want to say, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And because we have our ladies tuning in, I will make you fishers of people. God bless you all. Until we meet again, take care.